Hi, I'm in the town of Dungarvan in County Waterford and I'm here because one of you got in touch with me to say you should come to Dungarvan and meet a guy named Joe Power who has the most unusual office. This is Joe, and he sits yeah. here in the front window of Ormond's coffee shop all day, every day. My father said to me, you got off to university, and I said, but I have no interest. He said, aren't you always reading Shakespeare and fucking Jean-Paul Sartre and Albert Camus? Like, can't you do an arse degree? And so, of course, I was wicked cocky, as you are when you're 18 and 19. And so I said, I really have my arse degree done. You know, if, it, if I did an arse degree now, I'd, I'd have to study all these and actually do compositions on them and, and we'd take all the good out of them. Well, I don't care, you're going to university. Really so I said to him, are you paying? I said, I'm paying. He said, okay, I'll do a science degree then. And he said, what? That's the only thing you feel and you're leaving. You've got A's and everything else. Except, you know, you feel science. Mm. And he said, exactly, that's the only thing I don't know about. And I'm interested to know about science because I, I'm so bad. And my teachers actually weren't great, so I was blaming them, of course, as you do when you're 19. So I went off and did the science degree anyway, and I got it never, I never used it. But, but, but I told him that, that I wasn't going to use it, I just wanted to find out about science. And so anyway, my father, he was a baker, he had inherited a, uh, a bakery, right? And so he said, um, if you're not going to become a scientist, you can come home and help in the bakery. So I was in the bakery for about maybe 20 or 25 years, and after that closed down, a great friend of mine asked me to work in his record shop. And I, and I loved music, and I knew a lot about music, so that's why he asked me, and that's why I went in there. So I was there for another maybe 25 years. And now I'm a freelance know-it-all. <laughs> Like, I never married, but uh, my parents are dead, so I can do what I like, you know, more or less, which is really suits me, like. And and who, who are you waving at out the window? Random strangers, basically. Nobody, like, like I mean, <laughs> I mean, I... I, I you know that fella? No, I, I did, yeah, I, as it happens. I, no, <laughs> but, no, but I have been in Doug my whole life, so, so obviously I do know everybody. Right. And as I say, I just love the place now, and okay. I would never go anywhere else or move anywhere else or live anywhere else. It's just one of the most people, I call it the Amphilos, which is what they used to call Delphi or Delphi, you know, amongst the, amongst the ancient Greeks. Like it, it, it was where the oracle to Apollo was. It was considered the centre of the universe. Right. So Amphilos is a great word. And a great word for, for, for this little circle here as well, which is the Temenos. And the Temenos, the ancient Greeks, is the word that they gave to a place that was marked off as being uh, belonged to the gods, although it was on earth. Like. So it was the same as a shrine or an oracle or, or, so or, a, or a holy place. So this is the Temenos here. These two seats in front of the Temenos, yeah, yeah. That's great. And, and all the artists and the actresses and the painters and writers and everything were kind of congregating here. That's so, so it's like the left bank and in Paris as well in the 1920s with you know Joyce and Picasso and Buñuel and Dali and all these people and uh, you know Hemingway and all these guys like you know and 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 I have a great word as well which is a Parisian word for what I do now right and as far as I know it, it, like there's no translation into it in, into English of this word but it's a typically a French word especially a Parisian word and it's called a flaneur a, a flaneur person who just ambles from cafe to cafe and he sits around and talks you know and, and spreads with wisdom yeah spreads wisdom and 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 again like as you said like what do you do all day like everyone thinks that Joe is, is idling but there's a great book which I which I highly recommend to everyone I'm sure you know it already but it's by Bertrand Russell the English philosopher and it's called In Praise of Idleness because like he reckons it's only if you're if you're idling that you come up with ideas and, and you think outside the box and, and the stuff happens to you because, because you have time. You have time to take in what's happening around you and to think and to interact with people in, in, in a lovely, slow, relaxed way and actually come up with ideas. So all these guys uh, in Paris, for instance, actually were idling, but they also came up with material for the books they wrote, like, like, like Proust and Joyce and, and Picasso and Dali and everything. And tell me about sitting here all day. What do you do? Oh, I read mostly. To explain my obsession with Shakespeare, right, is that he's, he's the greatest humanist of all time. So he forgives everyone and understands everyone. Not, not forgives, he doesn't condone murder, mm -hmm. but he actually makes you uh, have sympathy for Richard the Third, who actually was a serial killer, you know, and Macbeth who kills everyone in the play, like, right? And I'm reading Macbeth here at the moment, right? But at one stage, 
He also prefigures Beckett and the French atheist existentialist in coming up with the idea of uh, absurdity, you know, the theatre of the absurd, mm. and like, you know, that actually life is meaningless. Yeah, at the end of Macbeth, right, and a Seton comes in and, and actually tells me his wife is dead, like, like she's killed herself because of the guilt of the murder. So he says, the Queen, my Lord, is dead. And then he goes into the speech, which, which, which actually prefigures the emptiness of the 20th century, the 21st century, and existential angst, basically. So he says, the Queen, my Lord, is dead. And Macbeth says, she should have died hereafter. There would have been a time for such a word. Tomorrow and, and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. And there's the actual blankness, and of course he's mocking himself as well, because the tale told by an idiot is, obviously Shakespeare himself is the idiot, yeah, yeah. because like, it's all meaningless, and you know, who cares anyway? And the people at the restaurant don't mind you sitting in the same seat all day long, do they? No, no because, because I bring in um, loads of people like you that will buy coffee now in a minute. Uh, hopefully, like, <laughs> this will be my justification, like, you know.